then our next guest is Frederick Fred Whitehurst, and he uh, was introduced to the lawyers committee through our investigative our investigator, that's uh, Christina Burgesson, who was the main investigator at on TWA 800, and she was a friend of uh, Fred, and uh, Fred's met with Mick Harrison and myself. And uh, Mick and uh, Christina had an idea to uh, give him our grand jury exhibits, to send them to him and ask him to uh, look at them and see if there's grounds for a grand jury and to uh, uh, get that uh, evidence before uh, a grand jury. Now, Fred's an American chemist and attorney, but he served as a supervisory special agent in the Federal Bureau of Investigation Laboratory from 1986 to 1998. He's concerned about problems he saw among agents. He went public as a whistleblower to bring attention to procedural errors and misconduct by agents. The FBI agreed to 40 reforms to improve the forensic reliability of its testing. And I think Fred had to sue the FBI. He may have to correct me and, and won over a million, about a million dollars in the lawsuit. So uh, Fred Whitehurst, uh, it's an honor for us to have you here. And, and thank you very much for for uh, presenting to our public and to the lawyers committee. Thanks, Fred. Can you hear me, David? Yes, we can. Good. Yep. I'm talking not just myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, and listening to, to uh, Mr. Corbett there, I'm afraid I, I can't even get close to matching him. What I want to talk about is science. I don't want to talk about um, uh, whether you agree with me or not. I have looked at the list of evidence, and I'd like to go through that, um, probably put a number of people to sleep. Um, I'm, I, I don't care about political agendas, and I don't care about um, back and forth name calling. What I care about is show me what you think, and I'll tell you what I think. And if you start beating on me because I've told you what I think, then I'm just going to quit talking to you. Okay? Um, but let's look at the evidence, the, you know, that, that, that report that, um, that you sent to me. And let's look at that. Okay. The 9-11 forensic evidence. And let's go through it. Um, um, just, uh, just brush through it. And I'll tell you my thoughts. Can you give me the next slide? Okay. Well, I don't know whether you can see that. Yes. Um, oh, let's see. Independent scientific um, laboratory analysis of dust samples um, that confirms the presence of uh, high-tech explosives and intermediate and incendiaries. Okay, um, <laughs> about that. If you'll give me the next slide, there, we may go back to this one. But okay, when I look at the data that's presented to me, what I see is some very real scientists. You know, active thermitic um, material discovered in the dust from. Um, if you told me that um, government scientists found this out, I will tell you about my history of being having my reports being rewritten while I was at the FBI by people. Um, I would tell you about um, uh, finding it out, you know, when it was public that I had said one thing and I hadn't said, and, you know, that isn't what I said at all. If you look at these guys here, um, this is an important aspect of what you're doing. Has the committee gone out and just asked for yes men? Well, look at the credentials of these folks. You know, um, University of Copenhagen, um, Brigham Young University, um, S and J. You know, if you go to me, if you come to me and you say I've got architects and engineers for the 9/11 uh, truth. Um, I want to know who they are or the International Center for 9-11 Studies. I want to know who they are. But these other folks here, um, they're, they're, you know, um, they come from established um, academic environment and they're not government controlled. Okay, give me the next slide if you would. High temperature, extremely high temperatures during the World Trade Center destruction. And look at those folks. I know that as I testified before the U.S. Senate um, committees investigating the FBI laboratory, you can't always tell the truth and keep your job in Washington, D.C. These people are not in Washington, D.C. 
Department of Physics and Astro and Astronomy, Gregory Milling, Physics Department, University of Maryland. Um, look at that, Department of Physics, University of Iowa. Uh, um, those are not controlled, in my opinion, by a government agenda or a political agenda. They're looking at, at these, these bits of um, these questions that are being asked by the Lawyers Committee. And um, I've read these papers. They're coming up with very, it's, it's good science that they're using. Um, and what they've come up with demands further attention. And in my, my opinion, you'll hear me say this a number of times, by a grand jury that's convened to look at this evidence. Can you give me the next slide? <clears throat> okay, the characteristics of the demolition. Um, expert analysis and opinion from numerous architects. Don't tell me that. David, don't tell me numerous architects, engineers, and scientists that the collapse of exhibited the characteristics of demolition by use of. Exhibit the characteristics of by use of is, is a wishy-washy thing. You know, well, what else is it? What else does it exhibit the characteristics of? Um, of course, there are alternative explanations for the data. I will tell you, and I'm going to tell you again. When I try to offer alternative explanations for data as a PhD chemist with a law degree in the Federal Bureau of Investigation Laboratory, I was ordered more often than not to take out the alternative explanations for the data. Somebody's political agenda needed to make sure that an Arab or a somebody, one of those people, was found guilty. And they couldn't, they couldn't, what they considered weak in the case. And I lived through that. In fact, I didn't retire normally from the FBI with my 20 years in. I retired after 16 years because I just refused to bend to that. Okay. Um, go to the next slide, if you would. Exhibit the characteristics is a weak and misleading characterization, which is easily misinterpreted. That the collapse of exhibit the characteristics of. Now, I'm, I'm just talking plain here, David. Okay of explosives and, and incendiaries. Well, okay, and it did. What else did he exhibit the characteristics of? And we have to ask those. I'm a scientist. I'm going to argue with you because that's what I do. Give me the next slide. What do we do about this? There's not a lot you can do with it. There's some absolute seismic data that supports the conclusion that prior to the airplane impacts, and prior to the building collapses, there were explosions. What do you do with that data? A plane hit the building, and of course, somebody picked that up on the seismic equipment, but explosions on seismic equipment. I'm not a seismic guy. I'm not a fellow that runs those. I'm not an expert at in that area. But what I am is somebody that's reading something saying, you know what, if that's right, if that's right, then what do you do with that? Well, the grand jury needs to look at that in depth. Uh, no question, needs to look at it. Go to the next slide, if you would. Characteristics of controlled demolition. There we go again, characteristics of. You know, in the World Trade Center uh, bombing in 1993, I found presence of a particular type of explosive. However, it was also consistent with the fact that um, on the streets of New York, they were using a chemical to melt ice. It was characteristic of that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there was a uh, sewage mains that busted in the World Trade Center the first time it was blown up. And the things we were seeing, which was urea, are in, they're in urine. They're in sewage. So characteristic of, uh, when I look at this, I shudder. I want to say, a grand jury needs to look at that. It needs to see that. It needs to say, okay, but what are the alternative explanations for the data? And expert testimony in the symmetrical straight down collapse of World Trade Center 7 into a relatively small footprint and rubble pile. Let me tell you the weaknesses there. Give me the next slide, okay? Let me tell you the what the 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 next what the there are not that many buildings that blow up. What we are used to looking on television as non-experts, and I'm not an expert in architectural damage or 
damage, uh, blast damage to structures. There's not that many World Trade Centers that have ever been blown up before. In fact, oh darn, there's only one other example and it had nothing to do, they, they took a truck in there and blew it up, okay? So what we see and what drives us to say, well, this looks like the thing blew up and settled as if it were controlled demolition. We, we are convinced what we're seeing is, oh, well, that's what I saw when I saw so-and-so blow up a building. And we see it on, on um, you know, it's interesting to watch the building collapse in its own footprint. But what is the alternative explanation for that? Um, it's, it's, it's just right fine when you look at uh, Trade Center 1 and Trade Center 2. But now you've got this embarrassing thing of the asymmetric, or the asymmetric, my foot, the symmetric damage to World Trade Center 7. Nothing hit it. It's standing there, and it's supposed to, to settle into its own footprint. You know, I actually was watching that on television. I was sitting with my parents in their home, and I said, when that building, when those buildings go over, we're going to lose 100,000 people. Because in 1993, when we were in the basement of that building, we were told you need to do what you're gonna do pretty quick because the building is swaying up at top because the structure has been uh, compromised down below. And so I figured, okay, this building is gonna topple over sideways. And you know, I wasn't an FBI agent anymore, but my, my response to it, wait a minute, it just settled into itself. Well, that's, that's, that's strange, but I'm not a blast engineer. I'm not a structural engineer that specializes in blast damage. And neither are most of you that are listening to this. We have to remain um, vigilant that we have our own internal bias, our own, but you know what? A grand jury needs to look at this. Why did World Trade Center 7 just collapse? 20 years later, we continue to have government stonewalling, and we're going to have government stonewalling. Give me the next slide. Free fall. Well, we can say free fall, but how many of you listening to this know what that really means? How many of you are physicists? How many? It, it's, it sounds really good. Um, it's measurement that, um, first of all, I wouldn't understand if I saw it, um, but somebody actually collected data, actually watched it, actually watched the film as the thing went down and has given us their opinion, but their opinion is their opinion. Let's look below their opinion. And by the way, that's going to happen with a grand jury investigation period only that way. And I'm, I'm very much pro having another look at this. Um, who are the guys that render these opinions? Okay, go to the next slide. Now we have a physics teacher and an architect. Okay, what I know, and that's in, in the, um, oh, the site from the 44, okay, the subscript. During the 1990s, the U.S. State Department actually employed engineers with specific expertise in blast effect damage on buildings. And I know I worked with them, I talked to them. Their mission was to harden the targets against such attacks. We would want such expertise to review for the record, the data from 9-11 damage to the World Trade Center buildings. For the record. Now we're talking in the 1990s, those people are out there, they're available. A grand jury needs to find them, and it would be very easy for a federal grand jury to go out and find such people because they're on record as having worked for the United States Department, uh, U.S. State Department. Okay, go ahead. Next slide. Consistent with what else? Okay, the use of thermite, thermate, and nanothermite explosives and incendiaries. I don't like that that term. I don't like that, David. I I want to have somebody look at what are the alternative explanations for that. Of course, facing us, give me the next slide. Facing us, we have the fact that 
oh my gosh, there's this stuff I started hearing about <laughs> years ago. It was the red dust all over New York. Oh, there was this uncharacteristic red dust. And what was it? Well, I understand that the Lawyers Commission went out and got some red dust from independent sources. I heard about these this red dust, and I wondered to myself, one of my jobs was to look at explosive residues. I was the lead explosive residue analyst for the FBI for a number of years, to look at it and figure out what it meant. What is this, this stuff? Now, I happen to know that dust was looked at just after the building went down, but um, the fellow that was, was commissioned to do that was told he was looking for dust to see if it would affect the computers that people recovered. Well, I, I'm not so sure. Um, somebody might have, I'm just saying, might have given, me, given him red dust in the dust and to see if he came up with anything. But there's this doggone red dust. And what is red dust? Well, give me a picture of this. The next slide. There it is. Now, this is a microscopic size particles, well, one millimeter. And it's all over the place. People collect it as mementos. There's, a, there's actually an artist who collected it to incorporate into artwork. There are folks in those four different locations, but I can guarantee you it was everywhere. What is that stuff? Well, the, um, the commission had it analyzed. Can you give me the next slide? They put it up underneath a scanning electron microscope, and they looked at the components in it, and they found extremely small particles of aluminum, and they found iron oxide embedded in that red resin. And the aluminum powder itself, according to those folks, and by the way, those are some of the, the folks that I quoted when I first started, the aluminum itself has um, size that is extremely small. Now, somebody wants to call that super thermite, you know, as an explosive analyst, I, I, I just, you know, I get impatient with labels. Everybody knows if you want it to, to have more power, you, you get the components in the explosive mixture to be smaller and smaller so there's more surface area for chemical reaction to take place. Well, that's what they've got there. Go ahead. The issue that I've got is, okay, that material is in a resin. It's, in a resin. it's embedded in a resin. It, uh, the, the data says to me, as the guy who ran the um, foreign explosive reference file, where I conducted reverse engineering of explosives for the FBI for many years, okay? It says to me, this is an engineered system. It has been well thought out, well characterized. When you have an explosive system, you've got to characterize it so you know it's not going to go off when you don't want it to. Whoever put that together, um, put it together with a great deal of research, a great deal of effort, and it can be reverse engineered to determine where it came from. And you can do that. And one of the parts that's missing here is the polymer resin analysis. When you look at it, it looks like paint. Uh, you know, under the microscope, your first um, inclination is to say, well, this is a paint chip, but not with a, not with a small size combination with the iron oxide. It's also an energetic material because they do a, a, a flame initiation test on it and it goes. When you put a, a hot match to it or whatever, it goes off. And so this is an energetic system. It's a very well engineered energetic system. It did not take place. It, it was not made in a, in a in a, uh, what would you say, in a cave in Afghanistan. It was made by somebody who knew what he was doing or some bodies. And that further investigation of that demands, demands a uh, grand jury investigation. It demands it. And it demands the kinds of folks who conducted the analyses already here to be brought in under the, the wing of the grand jury 
don't go to the FBI, you're not going to get an answer that's not politically correct. You're not going to, I know, I've been there, I'll show you, okay? Don't go to the Homeland Security. Go to, to academic, go to private, and also make sure when you go that you follow, you, you, you give, what is it, cover for those folks to say what they believe rather than what they've been pressured to believe, okay? And here I say the government shouldn't be the place where the answers, you know, where the questions are answered. The grand jury investigation should be. And if the government refuses to cooperate, that refusal should be made public immediately. And the refuser should be publicly named and called to answer by their, for their refusal by the grand jury. Right now, the FBI is refusing, refusing outright to honor FOIA. And they're doing it by stalling for years and years and years. I know because I've had Freedom Information Act requests from them for years and years and years. And they've just decided they're not going to uh, follow through with federal law. They're just not going to. Give me the next slide. Okay. Here's what happened in 19 world, 1993 World Trade Center bombing. I was ordered by FBI management all the way to the top to take exculpatory information out of my reports. <coughs> I found things. I wrote them up in my report. I was ordered, and I remember exactly the day. I can tell you it was a rainy, drizzly, miserable day, looking out a window and telling my boss, who disagreed with that order but told me he had to pass it along, um, well, they can just fire me then. I'll be flipping hamburgers tomorrow. I'm not going to lie in my report. I'm not going to lie to a court of law, in a court of law. They wanted me to take alternative explanations, ex explanations out for the data out, okay? I refused. I know now that that sort of thing is continuing in the FBI laboratory. A government laboratory is not the place to look for the answers here. And by the way, you're going to find a lot greater and better expertise in the kinds of places the lawyers, lawyers commission's already gone to. Can you give me the next slide? <clears throat> there probably isn't one. Okay. I'll tell you another story and finish this up. I wrote a report, you can read it in the Inspector General's investigation of the FBI Crime Laboratory, uh, which was published in 1997, it's still on the internet. I wrote a report explaining that explosives that we found had never been seen by the laboratory before. Those explosives were used in an attempted assassination attempt against George Bush Sr. in Kuwait. The next thing I knew, I was reading that those explosives were seen by, in multiple occasions before, by Iraqi agents. And I'm seeing that from the Secretary of State, the White House, and Colin Powell. And I went ballistic. And it turned out that my report had been wordsmithed. I'm the only guy in the FBI who could have written the report, who could have put out that information. It was a unique position, and yet my report was changed to reflect the fact that Iraqi agents had tried to kill the president, the former president of the United States. You can read my objections. If you go to the government with your questions, you're going to get what you've already gotten. You're going to get stonewalling and you're going to get some poor chemist in a lab who really wants to tell the truth, being pressured into, well, I don't care what you say. We'll fix it. So, David, I'm going to give it back to you. Fred, thanks so much. Boy, oh, boy. I know you've had the, your experience there and you talk from that experience. Uh, there's a lot of problems with the FBI and uh You've pointed us in, a, in the right direction, and we appreciate the, the courage you've had over the years to basically hold the line. And as part of uh, what we have to do is hold the line in certain aspects. And right there with you drew the line in your, your job. And uh, uh, we, we take uh, you as an example of what we should be doing too. So appreciate you uh, presenting to us. We learned a lot. We'll probably be in touch with you for sure. And uh, you help us uh, go forward in a better way. So thanks a lot for everything you've done. You're welcome. <laughs>
Okay, well, that was uh, really, uh, that Fred Whitehurst, that's really interesting. Just think of that. He was the main chemist in the 1993 bombing of the, of the North Tower. And uh, he just told you, basically, there's a lot of grounds for a grand jury to get into the evidence that we presented to them. So that's uh, really encouraging. Uh, we really didn't know what he was going to say. We thought he would say something like that. And uh, uh, certainly glad he did uh, do that in his presentation. Hi, I'm Julia Pasissi, a friend of the Lawyers Committee for 9-11 Inquiry. Please share our website and videos with everyone you can. And stay tuned for more information about the virtual anniversary event from the Lawyers Committee on September 11th, 2021. Thank you.